episode of Ice Pilots and WT. This is my son, Mike. Father and son go shopping for a plane in England. It's a thin between want and need. But things get out of hand. <laughs> Joe races to England. How do I get to that airplane over there? And hits a meltdown on the way home. And Joe heads to England. I'll take them all. I'll need them all. To raid an airline. It's all been in a box. Back to Canada. And make some history. Basically, uh, a DC-4, you know, you know, brrrr, or Electra, get to the fire quicker. A driver takes them from London, 145 kilometers northwest to Coventry. There she is, Don, headache number one. Atlantic Airlines operates three Electras and has several more for sale. Joe is hoping to buy one that he can convert to a water bomber by adding a belly tank. Really sweet. I hope they're not as tired as we are. You know what I'm thinking? There's a pop machine in there. We don't have any, any pence. We don't have any pence. Well, let's find some washers. <laughs> Joe McBrien. No. Canada. No, that way. Uh, here we are. Nigel Hirons, Atlantic Airlines Director of Engineering, greets the Buffalo team. You know my son, Mike? This is my son, Mike. How are you doing? Nice yeah. to meet you. We acquired these aircraft in 2002, and we were going to convert them to the UK register, but uh, the demands of our customers changed, and uh, basically they've sat there ever since. Yeah, so they were sitting in here the last time I seen it, eh? Joe knows what he's searching for. Over the years, he's developed the keen ability to spot a diamond in the rough. This airplane has sat for as long as it has here. Basically, our purpose here now is to look for any damage or corrosion issues that would have developed uh, since 2002. Like, that's corrosion if I've ever seen some. That corrosion is, is, is on an aileron. The corrosion we don't want is in this fuel bay where it, it teaks through the wing. And the fuel leaks out, and then the wing weakens like here. Right there. There, there, there. All down here. Not a good sign, but electras are hard to come by. Uh, like five, six years ago, there was enough electras around that this wouldn't have been looked at. He's looking now, though. Without a third Electra, Buffalo could lose its crucial firefighting contract. Brian is on the hunt for a Lockheed Electra. Joe needs another Electra to keep his summertime firefighting contract. We got a patches on this old girl, eh? Yeah. Wow. Look at that hole, Mr. Man. And inside this airplane is the cargo interior. He knows how to look past the rust and loose wires to assess the true value of a plane. So somewhere over in the hangar to be the seats and a control wheel. These things, eh? That's what I don't like, I think they cut these things. I mean, that seems all pretty good in there. Holy shit balls. Mikey has come along to learn the fine art of airplane buying. But so far, he hasn't been much of a student. Think she'll work? Don't pull it. What? Don't pull it. <laughs> if he's supposed to be getting an education in airplane buying... Can't get it off? I don't know, just no. He's not setting himself up for a passing grade. There we go. As Mikey rescues himself from the life jacket, 
Joe and Electra expert Don Deo check out one more plane. Uh, had uh, a lot of experience with uh, moving these things after they've been stored for a long period of time, so I've managed to uncover uh, a lot of different things that you'll find when they sit for a while. You know, I was talking to the guy at Lockheed about, he said, if they cross over it, you got to put it back on, eh? This airplane must have been uh, Air Japan at one time. Japan Airlines, I see some Japanese signals here. We're looking for any signs of corrosion that is bubbling up in the planks, the six planks that make up the wing. Well, that type of uh, aluminum, you don't want to scratch it because it'll, it'll tend to crack. And if you have a rivet or a, a nail or something stuck in the sole of your shoe, it'll scratch that wing pretty bad. So the best just kick your shoes off. It's built to be light and go fast and, and be brittle. On a DC-3, DC-4 doesn't really matter, but these things, if you scratch them, they crack, eh? The Electra wing is designed to withstand stress, but its aluminum plank structure means even a one-inch scratch could require an eight-foot patch. One reason the Warhorse DC-4 has endured all these years is its I-beam rib structure, wrapped with a tough aluminum skin that can easily be repaired. Meanwhile, Mikey's found a new distraction. I love it when an airplane works. Like... Call buttons. Hello. 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 Hey, the buffet aisle. This is kind of neat where they heated up all the meals and took them out for everybody. I don't know what that did, but it made a noise. <laughs> Holy, look at this. This is probably the safest spot to be, though, where the black box is. Mikey doesn't seem to be taking this trip too seriously, but it's serious business to his dad. I don't anticipate a whole lot of problems. Murphy will be around. How's it doing? Are we getting some power Just, there? Just uh, the aircraft actually flat at the moment. Joe may change his opinion after he gets Don's detailed report. It's my job to check it over and uh, give him a list of what I see uh, and what I think it's going to take to uh, bring it back into operational status. And then it's his, uh, it hits his job then to, to weigh all those facts and determine whether that's uh, the right thing for his operation and what he intends to do with the airplane. But it's quitting time at Atlantic Airlines. So a thorough inspection will have to wait until tomorrow. Only then will Joe find out if there's an Electra worth buying, or if it's just 57,000 pounds of scrap metal. Back to Atlantic Airlines, where he hopes to buy an Electra. But with a starting price of over a quarter million dollars, Joe needs to know if it's worth it. And determining that is up to Electra expert Don Deo. This is an airplane is built with a lot of aluminum. Uh, so aluminum tends to uh, corrode uh, rather quickly. Eight years in, in inclement weather can uh, create uh, corrosion problems. So yeah, you can see the same thing here. She, she's beat up pretty bad. This looks like it's been skinned one time already. There are some spots that I found uh, down in the belly and uh, on the wings there that are gonna bear a real close second look. That's an add-on panel right there. That is, yeah. yeah. Don shows Joe what he's discovered. That big beam as it goes through there, See the one that comes up off the floor? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of garbage there. Found by taking these things out, eh? Yep, they're all soaked in water. It looks like a mouse nest in there. Yeah. Right in there? Where you got your flashlight. Yeah. Play box. Yeah, that's aluminum. But that's not a showstopper, that one. Oh, no. no. That's just a nuisance one. Yeah. To people like Joe, uh, that uh, are looking at it as their next step in their business plan. Uh, it's uh, a good uh, core airplane that deserves a second chance, and uh, it's something that he can bring up to his standards and, uh, and operate uh, in his fleet. Yeah, that's, that's a changeable panel. Joe and Don are feeling positive about this Electra's potential as a firefighting water bomber. And Mikey, after his tiring walk through history, he's found a quiet place for a power nap. At the airport in Coventry, England, Buffalo Joe has found a Lockheed Electra he wants to buy. Got some air in there we get yeah. It's a thin line between want and need. Well, it's needed for the company to compete in the turbine world. The airplane came out of Alaska to, to uh, the UK here. With that in mind, I know it'll do a very good job in the Northwest Territories, which is 
no different than last year. While Joe studies the Electra's logbook, Don Deo gives the landing gear a second look. The nose uh, landing gear, nose wheel assembly, obviously supports the entire front of the airplane when it's on the ground. And of course, during landing, uh, it takes a, a good shock loading on there. So I want to make sure that all the components down there are complete. Looking at the logbook here, made Anchorage, Alaska, the Frobisher Bay in seven hours and two minutes. And then from Frobisher Bay to Coventry, England here, there was seven hours and 38 minutes. So you travel halfway around the world in 14 hours and 40 minutes. That's pretty impressive. So when you're ready to go out there, let me know and I'll go with you. Okay. With Joe and Don focused on the Electra, Mikey is on a different tack. It's World Cup playoffs, and Mikey's going to the pub with the boys from Atlantic. We were in England uh, just in time for a big uh, soccer match, which they call football. That's a whole kit. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> Drag your full face. Yeah. Yeah, that's traditional. Watching the game English style means getting a paint job. <laughs> this is tradition. Looks fabulous. Who's next? You won't be the only one, I promise you. No? Uh, <laughs> perfect. So we're, at, we're just heading out to the pub now and uh, see what kind of trouble we can get into. You gotta go like that? Yeah, of course. When in Rome, right? You gotta be like everyone else. It's a chance to schmooze the sellers from Atlantic Airlines and prove to Joe that he can help close the deal. But impressing the Brits is going to require all of Mikey's charms. In England, Joe McBrien has found a plane that could be the key to keeping Buffalo's lucrative government contract to fight forest fires. Thing is, no, I don't know if people in Germany will like me. With England's flag on his face, Mikey is going to the pub with the plane's owners to grease the wheels on the deal. He'd rather go socialize and look at stuff, so it's a good combination. <laughs> uh, my father doesn't uh, drink. He hasn't drank, I think, over like 15, 16 years. Um, sometimes deals are done in bars, so I guess technically that's my job is to go out and have fun with the boys. Hey, guys, what's happening? How's it going so far? Terrible. Terrible. Yep. Almost as bad as your face. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I've peed on her. That'd be an insult. <laughs> Turns out Mikey's the only one watching the soccer match with a face painted in England's colors. But he's not letting that phase him. Yeah, man, this is this is awesome. Like, it, it definitely reminds me of uh, hockey back home. Except these people are crazy. <laughs> wins. But once the match is over, the real games begin. And everyone was happy, you know, the party moved outside and we started doing, uh, you know, traditional, I guess, English drinking games. Well, this is Mikey. He's about to partake in a, a children's activity, which is uh, strange for an adult of this age at this, uh, this time of year, really. Looking good. It's going to be a... Come on, boy. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Well done, sir. The balance board. Right here. Oh, yeah. You can do that with a beer. Yes. With a beer. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> what spilt his beer? Mikey's neck. <laughs> oh, he's there. Easy. Yeah, for Canada. Mikey <laughs> puts Canada in the lead. But Beckham says for England. Yeah. Nothing cements an international business relationship like falling off a log. <laughs> Nothing, that is, except maybe a beer drinking challenge. Mikey, is this a drink off? No, no, no drink off. Ah. My father will kill me. He legitimately. Never mind kill your me. father. We'll he, sort He your showed father. me the knife. There's a tradition in England about drinking a yard of ale, which comes in a big tall glass with a bulbous bottom. Wait, how many pints? It's about one and a half pints, isn't it? 
That's not bad. Winner takes all. Takes what? National pride. I will put white on my face and a maple leaf. Oh, yeah! All Mikey has to do to be a winner is drink the yard of ale. I've seen one in a movie, but it was a boot. This time it was a, you know, like a big beaker. What the f is that? That's more than how many pints is that? Four and, shit, Four and a half. Four and a half. He said it was a pint and a half. <laughs> oh, this is here awesome. we go, here 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 we go. Go on. Oh, you guys, what the f man? <laughs> Luckily, from the movies, I know that there's an air bubble. And you gotta spin the thing to uh, so the air bubble doesn't bounce back and the beer doesn't hit you in the face. Mission accomplished. Mikey has passed the test and charmed his English hosts. Spread on there, Mikey. <laughs> I suppose if you've got characters like Mikey in the background, it does make deals a little bit easier to do because you've got somebody there with a, a nice smile on his face and uh, who's not too serious with life. Is this a maple leaf? You're like a fucking raspberry. Hear my hero, man. <laughs> It's the last day of the Coventry trip. Decision day. Yeah, we don't know what to need boxes, do we? All of them. Yeah, that's a brand new um, no scope electrical prop down. Uh, so my uh, my father is right in his element right now. As you can see, he's uh, he's treasure hunting, which means he's out looking for parts. Oh yeah, we're treasure hunting. We're like ravens. If it's chrome, we'll pick it up. If it's shiny, we'll squirrel it away in our nest. Joe's been looking around the premises and he's, uh, he's been looking on every, every space we've got, roof, cabin, store, to see if there's anything he can, uh, he can acquire, because he's very interested in, in getting an inventory of stock. So what I need now... Do you see your tires? To keep his fleet of vintage planes going, Joe has been scrounging for parts for 40 years. Bit of a scavenger, yeah. But he, uh, he knows what he wants. There's a prop right there. There's three propellers there, complete ones. We need everything we can find, because sooner or later, that airplane's going to need it. With two Electras already back in Yellowknife and hopes that he'll be leaving Coventry owning another, Electra parts are gold. Always need spares for an Electra, so uh, they stopped making spares uh, 20, 30 years ago for most of the stuff, so when you can find it, uh, it's uh, always good. And Joe has hit the mother load. To an untrained eye, including myself, uh, it just looks like a bunch of scrap metal in here, um, but uh, he spent, you know, you know, lots and lots of hours. When we all went home and we're all at the pub, he stayed here and sorted this all out. These containers of parts will be shipped to Yellowknife, and Joe's ready to close the deal on the coveted Electra too. I say at this point, there's a good chance that uh, that he'll be able to get it out of here. Of course, we haven't run any of the systems yet, or the engines. That's the one condition. The plane's systems must be operational, or else the deal is off. To determine if the systems are working, Electra expert Don Deo needs to get at least one of the engines started on a plane that sat idle for eight years. Yeah, Don's going to go fire the engines up, and if that's successful, uh, we might have a third uh, Electra in our fleet which is exactly what Joe needs to stay in the firefighting game. It's a big moment. If there's any problems and Don can't start the engine, yeah, we won't even think that way. Joe and Mikey's flight home leaves London in just a few hours, so there's barely time for this crucial test. Best case scenario, she fires up. Worst case scenario, she starts on fire. Buffalo Joe McBrien and his son Mikey have traveled across the Atlantic hoping to buy an Electra to keep up with the demands of their crucial firefighting contracts. The only thing standing between them and a deal is one final engine test. Ready on one? Ready on one. Clear. Clear out, close. OK, one's in. We're just waiting for it to fire. It's just spinning on the air right now. 
The starter has the pop spinning, but the engine still hasn't fired. Temperature going up. Uh, I think something's wrong. The turbine is getting dangerously hot. But the turbine engine still hasn't ignited. Don Deo aborts. That engine just spun on the air start, which means, you know, when you're turning your car over and you can hear it going, rawr, 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 rawr. your car's not actually running, it's just running on the starter. And that's what that engine was doing. It was just running on the air. So even though it looked like it was running, it was just spinning. If the engine won't start, Joe's deal to buy the plane is off, leaving Buffalo's firefighting contracts in doubt. Hopefully they'll try it again here. Oh, we've got uh, just slightly over an hour before he wants to be on the road, so uh, we haven't got much time. <laughs> so we'll go to number one again? Yeah, temperature's back down. Joe and Mikey wait anxiously on the tarmac. They need to leave for Heathrow to catch their flight home. Ready out clear? Okay. Buttons in. Success. The engine looks good now, so uh, second time, everything's a little looser, everything went a lot better. We got it up there, we're just fine. Got life in it again. She'll, uh, she'll fly another 50 years. This deal, worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, is done. After a thorough check, this Electra will cross the Atlantic in a few weeks and will fly Buffalo's colors, fighting forest fires next summer. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Here, I'll put down a speakerphone. Hang on, I got Rod with me. What's happening? Mike, how do you put this on a speakerphone? Speaker. Right Are you there now? Yeah. What did you find out about uh, what day the airplane has to leave Coventry? An airline in Coventry, England, has two Electras ready to go up for sale. These airplanes were coming on the market, and I wanted to be uh, the first one to put forward my offer on it. Joe's already planning the flight home. You know, where are they going to come straight across, or where are they going to go up the north route? Joe, it depends on the wind, to be honest with you, but I suspect we're probably going north. Yeah, I, I was talking to Rod here, and, and uh, of course, the, the thing we'd want first is the engines and, uh, and, and the line items that we use first, uh, you know, like wheels and brakes and stuff that wear out, you know. We got three to four customers now begging for the airplane. And we have one. In all likelihood, I'll be on my way. Okay, Joe. Okay, thanks a lot. We'd love to see you, but if not, we'll do everything uh, by the loop for you. But Joe hasn't bought anything yet. Once that airplane is airborne, is now Buffalo Airways. But until then, uh, it's all up for grabs. So just a few hours later, Joe's heading across the pond. This airplane is fully serviceable. It'll come off, off the bag run for your uh, DHL, we'll refuel it and go. What, 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 what's your flight time back you figure? 14 hours. Joe intends to be the first buyer in line. I'll take it easy over there, don't buy too many planes. Adios. See you later. I'll say hi to Mrs. Windsor for you. Well, thank you. These are probably the best electros in the world right now. Uh, for cargo because that's what they've been doing for the last 15 years straight and you know what they're already green so all you gotta do is slap a buffalo sticker on in coventry england buffalo joe has arrived on british soil and he's not wasting any time so what do we do just sign this one okay joe let's sign away hey Excellent. Thank you. Great, Joe. Thank you very much. Super good business with you. Oh, thank, thank you, guys. You're very kind to of me. I haven't left town yet, but yeah, yeah. so far you've been nice. I don't know where they are right now. They must be out flying. The planes are out on their final job, so Joe hasn't even had a chance to make an inspection. 
but he has scooped up the prize. He who pays the most wins. It's like an auction. When the hammer comes down, the guy's the biggest bid is the winner. This is going. But now that he's got his planes, Joe wants to add a few extra parts to the deal. Is there a compressor in this one? It's a, it's a one. Take that if you want. Yeah, I'm taking it. Just show you up here. There's a lot of stuff down here. So this stuff from here down, yeah, yeah. we'll just go down the aisles here. Where is this stuff here? Because there's nothing Joe loves more than getting stuff. You never know what you're going to need, so you take it all. What, these containers? Yeah, I need them, yeah. How many you got here? Uh, a lot. Our philosophy and our success in business has always been we've always had lots of parts and pieces for whatever airplane we operate, so we keep them going. This stuff here, what's in this one? And do you have any APUs here? What's this here? Propane? He knows what he wants, and I think he knows how to get it. If you see around here a long ladder, I gotta get in this airplane. Oh, I must have my umbrella. Very British now. We want all these torque tubes, towels, the wheels and brakes, all the flap jacks, all these rails. We want all of that. A little coach around here somewhere right into your office. We'll take the coach out of your office. <laughs> Thank you. But unless the first plane returns soon, Joe might be stranded. A little bit of a problem there trying to get props, eh? So we're in, in a little bit of a, of a quandary here. Two of the Electra's props are days away from the end of their lifespan. They have either a 5,000 hour use or five year use, and the calendar life is coming due. I had to get the airplanes uh, over and, and uh, on Canadian soil. But I couldn't wait till the 28th. Eh? because we're, we're done on the end of the month, eh, if we're... Just like Cinderella, at midnight, everything turns back to a pumpkin. Uh, the airplane becomes unserviceable. I gotta be back before the end, eh, with an airplane, eh? Joe's window is closing fast. How do I get to that airplane over there? At the Coventry Airport, Joe's ready to bring home his new Electra, which could help solve Buffalo's problem. But the new Electra isn't ready for Joe. When in Rome do the Romans do. So he's killing time at a very unique diner, inside a retired DC-6. It's a life for an airplane, but I don't know. Well, I guess it's better than being some pop cans. It's, it's, it's a serving a life. It's, a lot of people can go in there and reminisce. The restaurant is also part museum, with its cockpit intact and an old pilot's uniform on display. Get rid of my Canadian clothes and put on my English clothes. Get the tunic on it. Last time I wore a uniform was 1969. I thought I'd put the uniform on and strut around and see if I changed. There, there's how we looked at the time, and this is uh, the type of airplane I was flying at the time. This is how we took command of the airplane. But here we are. We'll hang up the microphone because I certainly don't want to talk to anybody. When I get back to Canada, I'll get all the boys dressed like this. We'll be taking these uniforms back. And Joe has to get back to Buffalo with his new Electra fast before the propellers expire in just two days. There she is. I thought I heard it come in last night about 11, 10 or something. Over in England, Joe's finally getting a look at his newest Electra. She was all cargo last night, eh? Yep. When it finished doing its runs, it landed in coverage and the airplane was turned over to me. And he can't afford to waste a minute. Two's all clear. Start two, ready, please. Joe's company needs a new Electra like never before. But tomorrow afternoon, his plane will be grounded. Yeah, there was a, a time frame I was racing, yeah. While the Electra warms up, Joe gets a call from home. Yeah, Mike. Hey, Dad. How's it going? It's going okay. What do you mean it's going okay? Must be something happening. Well, the Electra, the, uh, in Cambridge Bay, they dropped the power unit off the forklift and it uh, hit the side of the airplane. They dropped our fire, fire the King's power airplane? Yeah. 
Okay, so how else is it going there? <laughs> right on the way home, they blew uh, engine two. So just everything kept kept on piling up there last night. Of course, my father's worried. You know, he's got his multi-million dollar airplane. He's got hit. So how would anyone react? But, uh, you know, it was honestly, there's nothing for, for him to do, and he had to leave it for us to figure out how to fix it. I see. Joe's trip home just got even more urgent. We're just getting this airplane loaded. I got to get over there. Mikey's having problems. Uh, the fork just hit his airplane, so I got to get going. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. We're going to... Part is fixed right now. The trip will be Joe's first ever in an Electra, riding along with two British pilots. Right, ready. Ready? That's your one I say, ready for departure. Big lights out. They'll be flying the northern route, touching down for fuel in Keflavik, Iceland, and then Iqaluit in Nunavut, before heading to Buffalo's maintenance hangar in Red Deer, Alberta. So it's cleared Keflavik. After three hours in the air, Joe's crew descends toward the Keflavik airport. Joe wants this fuel stop to be quick, but Buffalo's bad luck has caught up with the boss. We've got a big hole in the spinner. How big a hole? Is that the hole in the front, or is it talking about another hole? <laughs> it's not the hole that's meant to be there. How big a hole do you mean? <laughs> it doesn't matter how big it is, it should be there. What uh, uh, engine you on? What is it, Joe? I could suffered some heat. The heating element built into the nose cone, or spinner, is burnt out. That puts the engine at big risk. Can you fly it that way to clean it up? Not until ice it. No ice. We'll get covered in ice, and that can disrupt the airflow into the intake, or go down the intake itself, and the engine will be damaged or could stop, stop working completely. And an extra spinner is the one spare Joe didn't grab. We had a chance to put them all on. Yeah. <laughs> There's six of them. Had uh, put them back. Joe and his plane are stuck in Iceland until another spinner arrives from Coventry. And he's got just over a day before the props run out and the Electra is forbidden from flying. Ah. It's a new morning in Keflavik, and Joe's got a new setback. Yeah, wait for Customer to release it here. Yeah. Well, he's trying to get his parts out of uh, customs. Of course, it's Sunday, and no matter how hard you try, there's always more paperwork needed. The old nose cone is off, and the prop is ready. But if Joe can't get the new one on today, his Electra won't be going anywhere. Keflavik Airport in Iceland, Buffalo Joe might finally be on the move. Only here. It's all part of the adventure of traveling home. Imagine how boring it would be if life was simple and everything worked. Customs has released his replacement spinner, and the mechanics are fitting it into place. As long as the final legs of the trip stay free of any more problems, Joe is on schedule to make it home before his props expire. Right. Right. 
care of it. Oh yeah, that's what we want. Blue skies and sunshine. The next morning, Mikey arrives in Alberta for a reunion. Radio, hello. Looking electric, positioning visually for runway 16. Joe's beaten his deadline with only a few hours to spare. We have parked right here at my hangar. Oh, okay. Side raises above them. Okay. So what we'll do is go off the end. He's got his new plane and some newfound respect for his son Mikey. The incident happened and he had uh, re reacted to it and, and he had solved the problem. Mikey's like that. He, he can take care of things if, uh, if he's asked to it. I've been through here quite a bit. So we got to be careful. Don't take something that's just stored in o OFB, eh? Buffalo Joe is on a shopping trip a long way from home. I got to take this generator with me so I can fix it. I'll put it up on the front there. Taking those because I got to change my overhead panel. I, I want patterns. I want to take these. I'm short of those at home. Eh? Yeah, yeah. What is that? I don't know. Never seen that before. What is it? He's back in Coventry, England, raiding Atlantic Airlines of every last part and piece he can use. Oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to use it all. Yeah. For Buffalo's fleet of L188 Lockheed Electrics. We have me? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll clean you out. This stays. This goes. But Joe's nabbing more than manuals and generators. They're pretty flimsy without the lids. We'll put the lid on a tape and then it's square, eh? Let's grab the rest. He's taking the very last Electra still flying in the UK. We're going to finish operating it this weekend and uh, Joe's going to take it over and hopefully operate it as long as he likes. Most of those airplanes have been in the inventory for, for 20 years. And they knew if I took the airplanes to Canada, their life would go on. The Electra started life as an airliner in the late 1950s. But as newer jets took over passenger travel, turboprop Electras started carrying freight. And as the few remaining are converted to tankers, even the freighters are becoming rare. Actually, besides uh, our Electra BAQ flying, Air Atlantic's got the only other in a cargo configuration currently flying. Now Atlantic's abandoning the turboprops in favor of the modern jet age. But even if the Electra is yesterday's plane here, at Buffalo, it's the plane of the future. Joe likes to operate the older type of aircraft. He doesn't want the expense and the trauma that goes with newer airplanes, I don't think. And he's so used to operating and dealing with obsolete things, he's, he's very good at that. So when they shut her down, Buffalo Air was the last operator in the world using Electras as cargo. So this leaves that one But Joe's not all that happy about the distinction. How long have you been Electras for? Oh, oh, we've only been in Electra business a couple of years. You love them? No. No. No, he's screaming sons of bitches. Joe's heart will always be with the roar of the old piston engine planes over those screaming turbines. But fuel is becoming a big problem. Because up north of the Arctic coast, there's no more avgas, it's all jet fuel. We're going to be fueled out of the piston-powered airplanes on, on long-range trips. It's a case of don't go or get an airplane you can buy fuel for. So Joe's picked up the last two to be retired here. He flew one home a few weeks ago. So all this here is weighed and we want to put it in the belly, eh? The second one is off finishing a contract, and the minute it's back, Joe's taking it to Canada. Here's my boxes. Along with anything else that's not bolted down. I don't want to go that way. But once Joe sees some scrap components from his favorite plane. DC three parts. All thoughts of the turboprop Electra are forgotten. Why would they scrap them? Well, we've been hanging around here for 10 years without being used. Do you have a place you can store them? Not really. You have a farm? Take them home. It's a shame. See old Rosie here. She's right on the money. I don't know how to get it home though. I keep forgetting I'm not in Calgary. But there are even more parts that Joe wants to bring home, and they're stored far from Coventry. So he's bringing in some backup. Oh, push. Just arriving from the airport. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming to see Kat. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Speed. Well, you, I made her. Huh? I made her. Did you? Joe's sending his son on a mission across the UK. Oh, let's have a look. I'll show Mike. And it's going to be a major challenge, at least for Mikey. In Coventry, England, Joe's shopping expedition is demanding some heavy-duty shopping carts. Well, those are two 40-foot containers. I'll be taking all these parts back to Canada. So those airplanes will end up in these containers and parts is really what's going to happen. The end of an era. It's all going in a box. Back to Canada. Joe will be taking home the last Electra still flying in the UK. And he's grabbing every spare part on the ramp. What's in there? The, is that the generator? Is that the one you got out of the belly? And then you got one in there. So we got three wooden boxes. Are they here? But not all the pieces Joe needs are here in Coventry. Morning. Morning. I got a, a truck. We're either gonna, it's either going to come here or they're going to, we got to go pick it up. A truck? You go to Tardif. What kind of truck? A little truck. There's a guy right here. Come with me. Joe still wants Mikey to collect some water bomber parts in Wales. Are you going in there? You drive it? Yeah. Fantastic. But the boy from Hay River is feeling a little lost. I assumed England's pretty small. Uh, it turns out Cardiff's in Wales, which is a whole other country, but that was just a detail that uh, I learned along the way. I had one day, and we had to get it done, so load up, lock and load, and get going. I want you to drive. Oh, we'll drive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I, got, I need at least uh, I need a co-pilot to tell me which way to go around those roundabouts. <laughs> yeah, that way. But some are this way, <laughs> and then some are that way. Honestly, I was getting kind of nervous that I was going to have to drive on the left side of the road. But luckily, we found a, a Canadian uh, last night that she uh, offered to come be a co-pilot. Uh, oh, in fact, here she is. Mikey's friend Sarah has come to help him navigate. So Sarah's Nigel? Yeah, hi, Steve. So you're the co-pilot, right? Yeah, yeah, I got my GPS as well, so... <laughs> I took an opportunity to ask a fellow Canadian uh, who's been living in the UK for a number of years to, you know, give me some driving tips. I don't want to go down. I got too much to do here right now. Yeah, but then we got to get going. Okay. All right. Yeah, oh, thank see you. you later. So always backwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I yield here to your right. That way's coming. You go. You know what? Driving on the other side of the road was really strange for me. Okay, so so you're turning right. Turning right. Yeah. Everything's backwards. You assume to look right, but you should be looking left. And then stick to the left. Yeah. I gotta put my pump in there. You know that little wheel pump. To pump those tanks full? Oh, Roy, right, okay, yeah, we'll yeah. grab that. Back in Coventry, Joe's just about ready to fly his latest prize home. I'll take them all. I'll need them all. So, how, long, how much longer would they be? Re oh, they refueled already? Yeah, we're done. You know where Mike is? On the ramp in Coventry, the Electra is fueled and ready to fly. The only piece of cargo that's missing is Mikey. You know where Mike is? Oh, I did. A crowd's already gathering to watch the historic departure of the UK's last Electra. The end of an aviation era. Off it goes. New life. And just in time, Mikey makes his deadline. So how you make out? Good, good. A little scuff on the rim. Hi, Mikey. Hello. Oh, now he's got your shirt. And I showed up a little bit late with the parts. You know, there's a boatload of people out there in safety vests, a bunch of kids and families, and everyone was saying goodbye. Well, I was quite surprised. There's a lot of aviation enthusiasts, and the ramps were full of people like, like an air show was going on. Joe's never had much love for the Electra. But for the people of Atlantic Airlines, today is a farewell to a classic. I've worked for on Electra's for, what, 25 years. This is the last one, yes. And uh, I suppose it's, it's a sad day for me. I received this one 19 years ago. It's leaving now. 
And I'm going to miss her. Now I'm going to take a little video. Yeah, I'll have a little tear up. Yeah, we will do. Okay. It's been part of my life for a long time. Some of the guys have uh, basically you know, come up from a, an apprenticeship or as trainees from leaving school and worked their way up on the electors. They've got a lot of experience on them and that's been their life. Go on, mate. Oh, I'm getting called over the chief. That's all they're waiting for is us, eh? Because they're going to leave without us. Well, the send-off was uh, way more than expected. Yeah, I got a picture of everybody here. Jake. It took us uh, a quite a while, you know, just to say goodbye to everybody. All right, I picture all you guys now. Thank you for your help. We're right coming out, so shut the door. Oh boy! What's that? Very careful. Is everybody? So it was pretty emotional. You know, it was like seeing a family member go. Let's lace that one. Okay, that's good. And drop. This is my first electric trip. Couldn't have picked a more awesome one. Fire trucks sprayed the old ARC retirement spray for us, and we taxied to it, which is really cool. <laughs> Stop. Okay, yeah, yeah. These lights out us. One food away. Sixty dollars. Too positive. Right? Gear up, please. Last time ever, Air Atlantic's uh, Electra is taken off from Coventry. But the flight crew has one final goodbye to make. So we'll do a low, low approach. Right? It was up until we turned around to do the flyby that it kind of hit me. It hit me like a sack of hammers. You know, I you know almost got a little bit teared up there, and, and just just the emotional rush of everything and. All that stuff, and it was really cool. And get out. Check. And even Joe can see the impact this plane has had here. It was the last Electra leaving the UK, and Electra's had had a 35 year service in the UK. I don't think my father was saved, but I think he believes it too that it was, you know, an emotional experience. I think it's bittersweet. Bitter that the airplane's leaving, and sweet that it's going to a place that is needed. Now, sir, positive rates. Traveling. An era's ending in Coventry, but there's a new one just beginning at Buffalo. When the book of the Electra is written, you know, Buffalo always might be the last chapter. 